Hi folks, this is Rich with Advantage Applications, and today we're going to take a look at a, a scenario that comes up pretty frequently when you're doing uh, real-world access database development, and that is you have a database with multiple users, and you need to make an update, and it may be critical, it may be time-sensitive, either way you need to get that data, that update in place quickly, but if users are on your database, you can't make that update, you can't overwrite that file. Uh, so how do you kick those users off in an efficient manner? Uh, if you have many users, it, it becomes completely impractical to call everybody and say, hey, are you even are you in the database? Uh, sometimes users may even go home for the day or be out at lunch and their, their laptops or workstations are open with your database open. So we have to have a way to get those users off of there. And uh, the way that we're going to do that today is we're going to use one table and one hidden form. Uh, this is an advanced topic. We will be working in VBA uh, so familiarity is assumed there. Also, we will be working with record sets. So if you haven't uh, done so, go ahead and have a look at my video uh, working with record sets in VBA. Uh, and now we'll get started. Okay, I'm just starting with a blank database here. That's all we need for this demonstration. Of course, you could just kind of plug what we do uh, today. You can just plug it into your database. Uh, but the first thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a table. And we really don't need an identity field in this table, but just in keeping with good practice and keeping our good habits up, I'll go ahead and create one anyway. Uh, we're only going to need a, a couple fields in here, so we're going to need a shutdown field, and we're going to make that a yes, no. We need a shutdown time, and that'll be a date time, and then we need an end time, also a date time field, and we'll just call this table TBL shut down. And I'm going to go ahead and just put some times in here just to create our very first record. Uh, so we can just do, say, 1 p.m. and 1 p.m. We'll just kind of get that in there. This, this table should only ever have one record in it anyway. Uh, so I, I'll just go ahead and get that inserted in there now. Okay, we can close this table now. And the next thing we're gonna need is a form that's gonna run in the background. We'll go ahead and create that now. And in the properties here under events, we're gonna to go to on timer and set it up for event procedure. And we're gonna set that interval. I like to run about every 30 seconds a check that way that I know I wouldn't have to wait too long if I need to get users off the database in an emergency. So we're going to set this to 30,000, and that will equal 30 seconds. Okay, so now we're going to go into our event procedure. Another good habit is to always use option explicit. Okay, and we are going to work with a record set based on the table shutdown. So I want to create a record set object I use DAO, and we'll need a SQL string, so dim str SQL as string. And now we're going to tell our SQL string to get everything from that table. Select all from table shutdown, and now we're going to set our record set, set RST equals current, oops, set RST equals current db.open record set and we're going to pass our SQL string in as a parameter. Now we're going to write some code, let's say bookmark, to work with the record that we're going to get from that table, but I like to go ahead and write code to close my record set too, that way I don't forget to do it later. So we'll say rst.close and set rst equals nothing to free up that memory. So now we want to check to see if within this record set that we've created here, if shutdown is set to true. So that's our first check. So if RST shutdown equals true, then, because if it isn't true, then we really don't need to do anything. We just let the, let the timer run on it, run its course, and the users can just happily keep on working in the database. But if it's true, the next thing we need to do is to see if the shutdown time 
is less than or greater than the current time and then decide what we're going to do there. So we're going to say if time is less than RST shutdown, then else end if. Okay, so if the current time is less than RST shutdown, then we just want to warn the users that a shutdown is coming. If it's greater, if the current time has already passed what our shutdown time is, then we want to shut the database down. So that's the simpler one to code. Let's start there. So if the current time is greater than uh, RST shutdown, then we just want to say do command quit. And that is going to quit the database. And it doesn't matter if there are dialog boxes open. It doesn't matter if a user's in the middle of a uh, work on a form or if they've just left it up and gone to lunch. It will close it. So you, you got to kind of be careful with this. Obviously, you, you want to uh, give users ample warning if you can. So and there's ways to program this to make it more sophisticated so that it kind of counts down and, and gives warnings uh, every, every few minutes. So if you wanted to give users maybe 10 minutes before the shutdown, to finish any kind of work task, you could you could take care of that by managing the uh, timer interval. But for this simple demo, I just kind of want to give you the basics of how it would work. So now we're going to say, okay, so time is less than RST uh, shutdown, so we're going to warn our users. We're going to do that with a message box. We're just going to say message box equals um, this database will shut down for maintenance at and we're going to concatenate here and we're going to use the value from our table. I think we call it shutdown time. And should be back online at approximately. And we'll use another value. I think we called that one end time. A couple carriage return line feeds in there. Thank you for your patience. And again, in this message, we could tell them, you know, please finish up your current tasks and, and close the database, or you know, or we could warn them that their work will be lost if uh, if they're not finished with it. But we'll just keep this message for the demo here, uh, short and simple. Let's put a breakpoint in our code so we can step through it when it runs. Go back to our form and so we don't have to wait 30 seconds to trigger that code for testing purposes let's go ahead and make that four seconds so a value of 4000 will equal four seconds so what we would need to do is to go into our shutdown table we would need to select shutdown if we did want to shut down the database we would say let's set a shutdown time and we of course want to set a shutdown time enough in the future that it gives users the opportunity to save their work or to, or to get out of the database if they need to. So we'll set our shutdown time right now for me it's 1.17 p.m. so we'll set it for 1.30 p.m. and we will say that we expect to have our database back up and running at 2 p.m. Okay, so I'll close that. I'm going to go ahead and make that form live. We're not going to hide it yet and in four seconds it's going to trigger the code. Okay, we have an error. Function call on left hand side of assignment must return variant or object. Okay, that is not a function call that's referencing a record set. Okay, so I try to use an assignment operator with a message box object and it doesn't need that. It just needs the string parameter. So that should work now. Yep. Okay, so we set our string SQL and pass it into a record set object. Okay, so shutdown is true. That was the first test and it tested true, of course. So now the next thing it's going to check is if our current time, which is 118 now, is less than the shutdown time. And if so, it's going to give us a message. Otherwise, it's going to quit the database. So here comes our message. This database will shut down for maintenance at 1.30 p.m. and should be back online at approximately 2 p.m. Thank you for your patience. Okay, great. We just hit that. It would play on through and it would execute again in four seconds and the events already stacked up because I had it in break mode so it executes again immediately. So uh, we'll take advantage of this iteration. Let's go back into our table shutdown and let's see what would have happened if indeed our shutdown time would have been earlier than the current time. So we'll make it 1 p.m. this time.
Okay, so that would have gone through the same steps and made a record set based on table shutdown. But this time, time is going to be greater than our shutdown time. So instead of prompting the user, it knows it just needs to go ahead and quit the database. Now, I'm not going to let that execute because it would kick, kick me out of the database right now. Uh, and it would, uh, again, it would circumvent any kind of dialog boxes or open forms or anything like that. And it would just kick the users out. Okay, so I'm going to stop it. Save it. Okay, and of course the other the other option or the other path that that code could take is if the shutdown checkbox is empty or false. So I'm going to relaunch this form. And there it starts to run the code again after about four seconds. And this time shutdown is going to be false. So it's just going to bypass all of that all, all together, which it should. That way, uh, if we aren't obviously shutting the database down, users can just keep working as, as normal. Okay, so there is a caveat that we need to talk about, and it is this. Okay, so suppose that you've warned your users, you've set up you know, your shutdown table, it's warned your users several minutes out, and uh, now it's actually shut down, you're making the changes. But let's say another user that hadn't even been in the database and didn't realize it was going to be down for maintenance now tries to get in the database. Now, it's true that after 30 seconds, in this case, they would get that warning. But if your interval is longer, say like five minutes, which isn't, isn't uncommon, um, they would know for five minutes that the database ought to be shut down. And in that time, you might actually try to make the updates and then you would be blocked again because another user has already gotten back in the database. So to get around that, what we need to do is hit this forms open event and run this same check immediately. That way, before your timer interval even executes, if shutdown is true and if the shutdown time is less than the current time, it automatically just quits the database. And uh, that, that will make sure that the users aren't in the database at all when you try to make that update. So we'll go ahead and walk through that real quick. So we have our form event on open. And we're pretty much just going to borrow this stuff here. We'll do this. Okay. Okay, so what we're doing again is we're uh, dimming out a record set object and a string for our SQL. We tell SQL to select all the records from table shutdown, which will always only be one record anyway. And uh, we set that record set object and we say if shutdown is true and our current time is already passed or greater than a defined shutdown time, then just go ahead and quit the database. No need to wait on a timer to run or anything like that because it's actively undergoing maintenance. So we just want to kick those users out as quickly as possible. Uh, then, of course, we want to close our record set and set that to nothing to free up the memory. Now, if this were a real database and, and we wanted to be as user friendly as possible, we would probably give them a, a different message. Uh, I would not use a message box. I would use an actual form uh, set up like a, like a dialog box to let them know, hey, the database is currently down for maintenance. We apologize for any inconvenience and then kick them out like in five seconds. I, mean, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't let them stay in there very long at all. I would put another uh, timer object in that form also so that it, it kicked them out after a certain time. But that's a little more user friendly than just all of a sudden, bam, it shuts them out and they're not even sure why. But this is the basics of how it would work. Uh, the other thing we need to do is to make sure that this form isn't actually viewed uh, by the users. So in most databases, you're going to have some type of switchboard uh, form like this. And uh, we're going to pretend that this is a switchboard populated with buttons that you know provide the uh, user access to the features of the database. But what we would want to do is, if this if this is the form that launches when your database first opens, we want it to launch our hidden form that's going to check for shutdowns immediately. That way, if this form later gets closed, our hidden form still runs and checks for uh, the need to shut down. So I uh, just created this form, called it uh, Form Start. Uh, just put a label for switchboard on there like that. And uh, what we're going to do is in its 
open event, we are going to call our shutdown form. And I didn't rename that, so I just left it as form one right now. But we'll just say do command open form. Pass that in as a string. So this will be form one. And several parameter arguments out there. We get, here it is, hidden. BC hidden. There we go. So now what's going to happen is as soon as our database opens our switchboard form, it's going to call uh, to open this form as well, but it's going to open it up behind the scenes. And the code will still run from form one. You, the users just won't see it. Okay, so let's go to our database properties for the current database. And I've already said it here, but we're going to set that to form start. Say OK. It's going to prompt us that we'll have to close and reopen the database before that takes effect, which I will do now. Okay, so our switchboard form would open. I didn't make any changes to it, so we still have record selectors and navigation controls and all of that. But our uh, form one is running in the background. And I'm going to go ahead and just make this change right here. We'll say, yep, yeah, one, and we'll say three, 3 p.m. And since that timer is running in the background, this is exactly the way it would happen if you needed to shut users out of your database. You would come in, you would set that parameter, it would check within 30 seconds to see if it needs to be shut down. And if so, it would, uh, would shut them out of the database so you can make your updates. I hope this was helpful. Uh, please like and subscribe. And if there are any ideas for videos you would like to see, please let me know. Thank you.